Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Microsoft Play Simulator. I'm Mark Wenzel, and there we go. Uh, glad you could make it for the stream. Uh, we got catering. Oh, they were just going right through the doors there. I didn't even open the doors. But anyway, welcome to the stream. We're here in uh, San Sula Pedro, Honduras at uh, Ramon Villeda Morales International Airport and we're going to be flying today to El Salvador International Airport, St. Oscar Arnolfo Romero y Galdamez, uh in San Salvador, El Salvador. And this is World Tour Flight 184, Lake 184 of the World Tour, flying into every country and territory in the world via real commercial flights or real flights as much as possible. Alright, so we got, we're in uh, Avianca today, flight 575, we're going to be flying on the fly-by-wire A32NX Airbus A320neo mod, uh, so let's start the boarding process with GSX Pro. Boarding requested. We are using um, FSLTL, a uh, flight simulator, live traffic deliveries. Uh, the planes did load in before, but then they disappeared, so I don't know what happened there. Hopefully this gate actually connects with us. For some reason, the parking spots here are a little wrong. At least when you first jump in. <laughs> okay, so I moved, I moved my plane over thinking that, okay, now I'm at least on the line, and it still refuses to connect, so. Some of these airports, it's just weird how the jetway's like, Pilots no, boarding starting. no, you're, you're close enough. I could, I could turn and hit there. Maybe you need to be further up. Let's try that. Let's reset everything and let's try that. I, I want to... Make sure we get this right. Right there, right? That looks a little better. I think the jetway should be able to connect properly, right? So we be. I'm restarting a GSM Pro. Nice jetway and everything. I think we're on the edge of a hurricane right here. I'm not sure what hurricane it is. Fine. What's going on? Uh, tropical storm Julia aims a uh, hurricane threat, dangerous flooding in America. So we're basically flying right over where uh, this tropical storm Julia is running right now. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, it's actually going to be right over <laughs> San Salvador, El Salvador. Oh. So this should be interesting. I didn't intend to fly into a hurricane. Right now it's over Nicaragua, it looks like, are the heaviest. But it is tracking towards El Salvador. So we're getting the edge of it right now, which sometimes is the worst. Bring that up on the on the All right, so here's the what we got going on right now. I put this in motion. We're gonna be flying right in there. So we're gonna get hit with the storm on our whole route, but I think we'll, yeah. I mean, right now, pass. Here we are right now. Storm's right there. 
By the time we get in El Salvador, it'll still be pretty clear. It's not coming that fast. Alright. Now let's get boarding. Let's get this thing going. Um, no, I don't. I want to move. Engine. Don't want to. Yeah, so you can see where the parking spot is. It's way off on GSX for some reason. <laughs> no, no crap. Parking spot. Back to where I was. Problem with the uh, blue tool is that it's very hard to kind of. At least I don't know how to make it not move so quick. Kind of just have to play with it. It'd be nice if the plane would load in in the proper place. Therefore, now we're just going to keep doing this dance. Got it right on the line pretty quickly before. Well, we'll try there. We'll see how bad it is. I feel like you're not at a spot. My thing. Alright, we're parking 20. Entering editor, please wait. Here we go, that will fix it. This is using the editor for GSX Pro. I should have done this before, but it's kind of frustrating how off some of these uh, reports are. I think that's just the default position to start the flight anyway. I not save that. Oh, it's so off, it's gonna take me forever. Alright, how do I get out of this? I don't remember how to get out of it. Ugh. <laughs> it does right. Kind of got the information right there too. Exiting from editing mode. Please wait. Boarding requested. I mean, it looks like it's adjusting everything according to the plane. So, okay, that's good. I think I think what happens is if you adjust the parking spot, everything, and then I went to that next up editing page, and it had all the stuff still moved over, but that's just in relation to the plane. So as soon as you have wherever that's supposed to set. Yeah, where are you gonna come out though? Come on. <laughs> Bought these fancy jetways. Which work nicely. But 
some reason now that it's like this thin. I don't know why we're dropping frames either. What's happened there? Restart this flight. Let's get everything restarted. See how it works. Restart things. Get things all uh, situated properly. It's just me. I, I'm gonna do this flight, and then um, that'll be it for the morning. Cause I'm gonna watch the football game, uh, Packers, Green Bay Packers uh, NFL game, uh, over in London, and that starts I think 8:30, so about an hour and a half. Here. So we'll get this flight in. To request ground services. You can see it doesn't start my plane fare. Okay, so GSX is still. You need to stop the engines to request ground services. Yes, yeah, so you can see the default starting position for the plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator is completely off where it is. Oh, that's that's nice. Always nice to see. Why is everything on now? Cold and dark, firm. Yeah, for some reason it turned everything on. That's new. PSX. Aircraft. There we go. Okay. So let's start the process here. I think we should be able to do it now. Uh, request boarding. Boarding requested. That's gonna work. Or... Okay, this gate does not work now. Incredibly frustrating. Okay. Anyway, we'll just. I guess we're. Not gonna have the jetway come out for some reason. All right, let's do our pre-flight checks here. So parking brake is set, wipers are off, uh, spoilers are retracted, flaps are retracted, engine mode normal, uh, switches, master switches in the off position. A little bit of lighting, nice. Um, for an idle. Landing gear down, anti-skid on, and wipers are off. Go up, up, and batteries on. For some reason now it's boarding only one passenger, PSX Pro also, so I had to figure that out. It's getting really weird. See, batteries on, right? All broken. There we go. There we go. GSX uh, connect ground power. All services request GPU. Cannot request GPU while boarding. Uh, Go on here. Kind of a finicky. Wait. So 
unfortunately, some airports we go to, GSX Pro is not going to work as well because the airport is not as structured and set up properly. I'd like to get, I'd like to get some uh, ground power on our way here. No, no ground power. How do I feel like I broke this? <laughs> this flight is broken. Why is my screen dropping frames too? I, everything is just weird this morning. Uh, flight simulator is acting weird. Stream is. Internet's acting weird. Like some external power, that'd be nice. Where the external power went, no idea. Broken gate. frustrating when you get to an airport that doesn't work very well with anything. To the additional services. There we go. DP. Oh, there it comes. Awesome. Alright, hopefully this works. Because for some reason the uh, fly-by-wire is not interacting, and I guess it's just I didn't have any problem with it when we landed here. We were able to get a GPU with the uh, PMDG. I guess the PMDG GPU is as a dependent on the airport. And I think the fly-by-wire one is a little bit more. Make sure my, my microphone's at the right levels. Elisha gets gets his hands. He likes to play with the the microphone. External power is not available. <laughs> what do you call this thing right here? This looks like an external power unit. Kidding me? It looks available. There we go. All right, external power is on. Finally, we'll request a boarding with our one passenger. Boarding requested. I'm not liking all this. Why we're having an FWS. That's just we don't have. This is extra stuff that's been added. I have not seen that before. So fingers crossed that our flight will go will work here because. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. I didn't, uh... Ugh. I just punched my screen at this point. Alright. Okay, perfect. It's just that's set up. Okay. I just hadn't noticed that before. Using the experimental version of the A32NX. There's a lot more stuff being added in. Let's get the fuel. I don't know if we have to wait on that or not. Um, fuel. Pull that in. We're gonna go 40. Go 4600. Okay, and payload. That coming in. 144 passengers, 400 kilos, cargo, zero fuel weight. Center of gravity can be 24.34%. That's actually helpful. But then we can put that in our calculator right away. Uh, yeah, of course. Startup Pack X in the background. 
we can hear passages coming on and all that good stuff. Finally ready to go. Uh, electrical systems must be turned on. What? I what? I don't even. I don't even know what to say right now. It's like. Just these little things seem to be breaking more and more and more on this sim as we go forward now again. It's like we, we kind of crested and then sim update 10 came and I'm running it. I've been running into a ton of problems. I figured out one of them. I think is the replay system. I don't know why we're having issues. With my electrical system is not. Yes, it is. I can verify that by looking right here. Electrical system. Totally on. So, okay, so I guess we're not going to use any ATC. This type. I could use FS HUD ATC again. Sorry about the stream quality for dropping frames. No idea why it's doing that. At this point, I almost wanted to punch the screen and give up. Because <laughs> everything's just being weird today. Um, this will turn on FS HUD ATC so I have something. Nav logo light on. Let's get into the uh, setup for our flight plan. Oh, I can. Cool. So now you can actually, because it used to be that you couldn't request that if you had a flight plan injected or if you set the flight plan up in Microsoft Flight Simulator's flight plan setup. You couldn't pull it from SimBrief then. But actually, you can now. That's pretty cool. I want to change my flight numbers. We don't have the ABA and it gets confused. Cost index 15. Cruise level 20, uh, flight level 240, 24,000. Perfect. Uh, flight plan. Herna, Nagel, Automa. Clear the discontinuity. And click on here. We're going to be taking off runway 4. We're just going direct. And then our approach. Um, we'll see what they give us. I don't know if we're going to get an approach or anything. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I would love to welcome you aboard our flight. When you find your seat, please be sure to place your larger carry-on items in the overhead seat and smaller items underneath the seat in front of you. Unless you're in the front row, please place all of your items in the overhead seat. If you have any trouble finding a location for your carry-on items, please let us know and we would be happy to assist you. If the overhead bin is full after you put your carry-on inside of it, please close the bin as a courtesy to other passengers. Once all your items are put away, please clear the aisle and sit down in your seat to allow other passengers to find their seats as well. If you are seated in an emergency exit row, please read the exit seating responsibilities in the safety card in the seat back in front of you. 
Via Talig 1, departure runway 04, initial climb 3000, then as filed, squawk 6551. Clear to El Salvador, SD Oscar Rom, via Talig 1, departure runway 04, initial climb 3000, then as filed, squawk 6551, Avianca 575. Avianca 575, red back correct. Wind ready, contact LA Mesa Ground, 121 decimal niner. When ready, contact LA Mesa one Ground, 121 decimal niner. I'll be anchored 575. Okay. Awesome. So I'm throw on uh, FS ATC. I haven't been using it lately because I'm using FSL uh, LTL, and that works with the in game ATC if you want to hear the other planes interacting with it, but because our ATC is broken, our radio isn't working for some reason, um, we'll just go like that. Alright, so they're, they're out here uh, getting the luggage put on, we're going to keep going on our startup. Uh, radio nav page, I'm going to put in the VOR for There you are for El Salvador. Yes, there is. Uh, Charlie Alpha Tango 117.5. We're going to need that because we do, if we have a go around, we need a radial off of that. That in, of course, the radial 110. And I'll also put the course for our arrival is 070. Use the OR for that. Well, um, the ILS landing system frequency that goes uh, automatically gets filled in once we get near. Oh, so good there. In it, page two. Uh, we'll put in our fuel, which is four point six. This should be changing. Your center of gravity is way off right now. Man, dropping a ton of frame. I'm sorry about the quality. Um, I have no. Not sure why it does that. I uh, was having these issues with um, ready to go when, when I was are. using Restream. And it seemed to clear up once I was just just using YouTube to stream, but now it's, yeah, kind of just bouncing all over the place, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, I'm not going to kill the stream now unless it gets really bad. All right, passengers still coming on. Uh, you heard Pat Gex say it, but they're not the same timing and everything. You see that center of gravity changing? Our center of gravity is going to be 24.34. I'm going to bring up the... I got my SimSmart A320 calculator, performance calculator for our takeoff. Okay, there it is. Our airport, we're taking off. Mike Hotel Lima Mike. Runway 4, puts in everything, our slope distance or length of runway get our meter data we've got 50 degrees at four knots so not bad on the wind on takeoff 24 degrees outside q and h in inches is 29.83 we have a wet runway anti-ice we're going to put uh we're gonna put those on since uh we're coming up in rain takeoff weight not there yet so we we can't get any of this done until we know our takeoff weight, which we'll know once we got everything on board, I think. I don't think we have that on the thin brief. Oh yeah, we do. Takeoff weight, 62.2. So we can actually put all that in right away. 62.2, we know the center of gravity is going to be 
three, four, which is forward, but it's less than 27%. Flex takeoff, climb thrust, uh, flaps one plus F, and air conditioning on. Calculate, get this all in. Bring on, down over back, flight computer. Our trip headwind. Find that on your sim brief as well. It's under average W slash C plus 26. But we have a tailwind 26 knots on our flight. Performance page 128 for V1, 136 for our rotate. So V1 is the highest speed we can go and still be able to abort the takeoff and get stopped before the end of the runway. See, it's very different from our rotate speed today because we have a wet, a wet runway. Transition altitude is 19,000. That doesn't seem right. Probably 18,000. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight. Thrust reduction. 75. Our flight time will be roughly 45 minutes. Now that the cabin door is closed, please make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your large Engine devices out, are now same thing, down 90. Please fasten your seatbelt uh, and make sure green that dot all the cables are in the full upright flux and lock position for departure. Flight attendants, please prepare cabin and for departure and cross-check. We'll get this information. Date. One more passengers to go. See that center of gravity kind of moving around. All right, load it up, ready to go on there. So that part of that. That barometric reference. Master switch for the APU on. And I want to go. American Airlines spawned in. The gate's not going to reach it. Park kind of off. Looks like we're ready to go. Double check our. Just gotta get rid of the ground power unit. Start with the APU. Flight directors are both on. Predictive wind shear on. And we'll lock the cockpit. Luckily, we're only at a small airport here, so we're not missing a ton with the ATC, but when yesterday we took off from DC in the morning, and there was just a ton of traffic, and it was so cool hearing all the talking and chatter and everything with the ATC and all the planes getting into position, getting their pushbacks, all that. All right, APU bleed on, external power off, and let's get that connected. Did request the pushback, so. You and prepare for pushback departure. Fuel pumps on. Beacon light on. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback.
to pay attention if they change their outfits depending on the weather. Um, definitely dressed appropriately for the weather a little bit more. Of course, they didn't take the board. The pin is inserted. Power cord not disconnected. It's, I think better to use the A3 to an X um, power right through here. Then you won't have that issue. But it wasn't working. All right, runway four. We're gonna want to push back so we can. Doesn't really matter which way, but let's go uh, get our nose to the left. It's closer. Slightly close. Okay, so we got one of these a little bit more advanced systems right here where she does all the locking with the pushback tug. I think they adjusted it. I don't know if they fixed that or this plane it just worked better. Or these two little uh, locks are kind of pushing into the tire and warping, warping. I don't know if you say warping on. Uh, oh. Hey, welcome. Uh, yeah, I don't have my Hebrew very well anymore. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's. Uh, um, yeah, I'm not even gonna try just because I can't remember. It's too long. All right, back inside. Let's please break. Starting engine one. Or starting engine two. Sorry. Invitamos a observar las indicaciones del video a continuación. Para abrochar el cinturón de seguridad, inserte la parte de metal dentro de la hebilla. Ajustelo al ángulo extremo. Para desabrocharlo, levante la parte superior de la hebilla. Si se presenta una pérdida de presión en la cabina, las máscaras de oxígeno caerán automáticamente. Para activar el flujo, tome la máscara más cercana y ale de ella hacia abajo. Uh... I need to figure out the custom pushback, how to like, uh, we should be way back there, not right here. El chaleco salvavidas está localizado debajo y al lado de la Para utilizarlo, pase su cabeza por la abertura. Asegúrelo pasando la cinta alrededor de su cintura. Abróchelo y ajustelo a su medida, al ángulo del extremo. El chaleco no debe ser inflado dentro de la cabina. Al salir del avión, ale de las dos perillas rojas para inflarlo o sople a través de los tubos rojos que se encuentran a cada lado. Una luz de localización se activará al contacto con el agua. Este avión cuenta con ocho salidas de emergencia. Todas cuentan con un gran para protección en tierra. Cuatro de estas están equipadas con balsas oh, para evacuación en agua. Eso es lo que yo he visto. ¿Por qué no están desconectados? En caso de la evacuación, tenemos un buen engine para que se desconecten. The American just got pushed back. Well, we can't hear that because our ATC is 
And now he's going to force Kai right here. So that's one drawback with uh, FSL TL is that they do not interact with you. Safety is very important really? To <laughs> we invite you to watch the following safety instructions. Right, he just cut the pin. You fasten your seatbelt, insert the metal end into the buckle, and oh, adjust it by American. pulling on the strap. To unfasten the seatbelt, probably interact the top of the buckle. In the fact that fuse that we're shooting right there in its way, oxygen masks will automatically drop. Right, right. Pull the mask down to start the oxygen flow. Put our flaps to one. Put it over your nose and mouth and breathe normally. Spoilers. Place the elastic band around your head and adjust it by pulling on the ends. Oxygen will flow through the mask even if the bag does not inflate. Secure your own mask. I feel like the English version of the others. safety brief a little bit louder than the Spanish part. Keep the mask on oh, until the crew right. advises otherwise. Taxi lights on if you believe you come. A love vest is located under or beside your seat. Uh, Delay my surprise. FS Hunter, do you want to see the ringing ATC is broken? Pass the strap. Copy on group 575. Taxi to holding point. Runway 04. Fine out. Do not inflate the life vest while in the cabin. Taxi to holding point. Runway. When Fly moving alpha. the aircraft, okay, inflate the vest by pulling on the red tabs or blowing into the red tubes. A light will turn on automatically upon contact with Taxi water. Taxi holding point via alpha. This aircraft has eight emergency exits. Each of them has a slide for land evacuation, and four of them are equipped with front and rear evacuation rafts. In case of an evacuation, a floor or seat lighting system will guide you to the nearest exit. We're on the edge of a tropical storm, you. Julia, I believe. I think uh, we should be landing in El Salvador in before in front of you. we really get into it. It's still Please take a moment heavily to over Nicaragua. Please make sure your seat belt oh, is we could, potentially. Your seat back fully upright. The tray table stowed. The window shades open. And carry on luggage, cup holders, and handsets stowed and locked. We remind you that smoking is forbidden, including electronic cigarettes. Tampering with laboratory smoke yeah, detectors so. is against the law. Thank you. Man, I'm and sorry about all the dropped frames or anything. I don't know what's going on. Really irritating. going on with my network today. Next flight in, is into Nicaragua. I think it's just going to work out perfectly that um, kind of have other plans this morning. Otherwise, I probably would have done this flight and the Nick and the flight to Nicaragua next. Um, possibly. Kind of curious what it would be like flying into Nicaragua just because we'd have a lot of winds. Big test, normal, no blue. Avianca 575, contact LA Mesa Tower, 118 decimal 2. Contact LA Mesa Tower, 118 decimal 2. Avianca 575.
Avianca 575, wind, calm, runway, 04, cleared for takeoff. Runway, 04, cleared for takeoff, Avianca 575. I'm guessing we could have that when they told us to call the tower, uh, we could have turned in there on Bravo. Chronometer and we're ready for takeoff. Landing gear up. Thrust lever back to climb, indent. Flaps retracted, autopilot engaged. Flickering screens. Avianca 575, contact LA Mason, approach 119 decimal 7. Contact LA Mason, approach 119 decimal 7, Avianca 575. LA Mason, approach Avianca 575, Tally 1, departure at 3100. Avianca 575, radar contact. One two thousand three hundred altimeter two nine A three. Continue climb one two thousand three hundred. I'll be anchored five seven five. I probably have this on the train. Uh, feature that's been added in uh, within the last month, I think. Wow, we are seriously getting some range. We have zero visibility. So this is gonna be Shoshana, yes. Okay, that's what it is, that's right. The, I was trying to, I completely was blanking on um, the, the, you know, so I know the, what is the first letter called, but you know, I know those are the sh, like the schwa, sh, uh, and then I was, I was blanking on what the just the straight line was, and that's that oh show you know so you get your show here we climbing at such a crazy rate. Oh, Shoshana, Shoshana, um, yeah, because there's no vowels. There's kind of uh, well, no, there's no vowels, but like or that um, the up and down letter I, I don't know what that is that kind of makes it makes like a long vowel sound so whatever vowel you want to stick in there you make it like the long vowel sound like close well, Joshana or it could be like Shay Shana I guess it, but it'd be like more it's more usually an O right then you have the O then uh, 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 no, uh, at the end there yeah, I was completely blanking on how to say it I knew it was sh sh something. Right. What is that letter? Is that Chef or Chev? Yeah. So a lot of practice. Been doing Spanish lately, so I'm kind of rusty on my Hebrew now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now passed ten thousand feet. 
you may now turn on your larger portable electronic devices. This is also a reminder All right, we're not getting a lot of turbulence right now, so I'm going to drop the seatbelt sign. This aircraft is equipped with onboard Wi-Fi. You will be required to pay a small fee if you wish to access it. We will offer complimentary flight duties thanks to our partners. Connect to the Wi-Fi and you will be able to access our wide range of free live TV and paid movies library. The flight crew has turned off the fastest seatbelt sign. You can now get up and move around the cabin. However, we ask that you keep your seatbelt fastened when you hear the beep of unexpected. Here we are, getting above the clouds. Avianca 575, climb and maintain. Flight level 200. Yeah, sorry about the stream quality, so if you guys are watching and it's, you know, missing, we're dropping frames, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Usually, like 99.9% .9 of the time, streams are uh, pretty smooth. We don't have any uh, dropped frames like that. This is the first time I've ever seen, well, not the first time, I've had some issues with this in the past few months, or past few weeks, but it was mainly when I was using Restream to stream for both YouTube and Twitch at the same time, which hadn't been a problem up until just a couple weeks ago. So now I'm only streaming on YouTube and I can kind of tell when I'm going to have issues because the the stream rate goes up, down, up, down, up, down. There we go, breaking above the clouds. At least above the, the rain. Does the Bob usually, is the Bob always uh, give you the long O sound? Or does that, uh... Getting up, but... but yeah, it, you know, because you, get, you, got, you got your S, you got your SH, and you have kind of that O, the long O, and then you have your SH with the shin again. But then there is no A. There's no A. Ah. This goes right to NUN, which is uh, N your end sound and then then it has the the ah at the end. Oh. Avianca five seven five climb and maintain flight level two four zero contact Central America Center one two four decimal three climb and maintain flight level two four zero when I first contact started Central doing America uh Hebrew Center, on Duolingo it was a real pain um because I had no idea it just kind of throws you in there and starts throwing words at you Central with, the, uh, with the alphabet, with the Hebrew alphabet. It's like, uh, you're not going to teach me, like, kind of teach me how to recognize the sounds that go with them. I think they updated it then and they actually have a section where you can learn your letters and everything first. It's a little bit more helpful, especially when it's you got a whole different alphabet. Climb two four zero. So get into our cruise. Still on our departure. Headed to Calag. A little bit of rain still, but we finally cleared it. It makes a B sound sometimes. 
Yeah, that's right. It makes ooh or oh. F. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit of, you can see a little bit of the ground. I guess we won't see much considering uh, we're kind of flying. Oh! Oh, okay, I'm on a. That's right, I'm on this. this is it. Okay, it looks like uh looks like Benny Overlay again is struggling. Uh, it's letting us know our estimated time saying 19 minutes, 137 nautical miles, which I think is pretty close at least. Yeah. Uh isn't giving us the little progress bar. So. Not sure why. Again, little things seem to just break all the time. Yep, the letter H mostly at the end produces an A sound. Yeah, that's the ah. Uh, so like, ah ba. I think you use the. And then there's a different. There's the uh, LF for the beginning, if the sound's at the beginning, right? I think. That's always got me because it's like, oh, there's no vowels. There are no vowels in Hebrew, you know, in the written Hebrew, but, well, there are. Just not all of them are written. A few are. Usually kind of in relation. Yep, LF is at the beginning and then you have the head at the end of things. When there's that. Well, you use that and then you use that, that same, uh, the ha is also at the beginning. Or like the. Like ha, uh, ha shoyim, go mayim, like the the sky, the heavens, uh, ha. Say like. Now, am I saying this right? Because I always, I know for, was it just? I think it was just, because the way we say it in America, or the way we say it in English, is uh, rosh, rosh, uh, rosh. I can't even say it in English anymore. Rosh Hashanah, because I say it like that. Rosh Hashanah. So I kind of have the different pronunciation. Rosh Hashanah. Because it's you know, Rosh, you know, is your head or the beginning, right? And then uh, Ha is the, and then Shana is year. So Rosh Hashanah, as opposed to Rosh Hashanah, I think is it? yeah. Rosh Hashanah is how people say it. I've usually heard it then. As I was learning Hebrew, I'm like, well, no, it shouldn't be more like Rosh HaShanah. A little bit because it's Shana and then HaShanah. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Or the kind of enunciation when you put it. Hey, Mika. So this is kind of an interesting sit. I, I think the direct would have been better. We're kind of doubling back then almost looks like. That's so kind of a... For this short of flight... It's kind of a silly, silly what we're doing here on this. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do, so we don't, no reason. Should have just gone direct. I don't know why. But if we go to turn, it's going to be kind of a weird turn. So what I'm going to do, we're just going to fly direct to Nagel. Even Nagel is still. Can you see how far we flew out of the path on this SID? As opposed to just going direct, gray line. Oh. Going alright. Um, hopefully, the stream is 
playing for you okay. You're not mi losing a lot of frames. I've got, I mean, usually when I do these streams, I get no dropped frames, like zero. Right now I'm almost at 5,000 dropped frames, which is about 2% of everything we have. So it's, you know, not terrible, but uh, I don't know what's going on with the, the stream today. A little bit, a little bit finicky. Um, wasn't the greatest uh, start in at the airport in Honduras. But we're flying over the edge right now of the Tropical Storm Julia, which is hammering Nicaragua rock right now and it's going to be moving up towards San Salvador, where we're headed. I think it would be pretty interesting to do the next World Tour flight today, uh, but I already have plans for at least this morning. Maybe I'll do it in the afternoon. I think it'd be pretty interesting to kind of fly into the hurricane or into the tropical storm. In reality, we probably shouldn't. And so I think it kind of just works out that we'll probably do that flight into Nicaragua on Wednesday in the morning. <laughs> Time to get the 4090 Ti. Well, not the Ti, it's just the 4090 right now. They don't have the Ti yet. Which is very weird. What do they have? They have the 4090, then they have the 4080. Do they have the 4080 Ti already? Because I know there's two 40... No, 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 no. They have the 4080 12 gig, and then they have the 4080 16 gig, which is very weird because then where are you going to slot in the 4080 Ti when you put that out, right? Yeah, I, I haven't even looked and seen how big those are. I would love to be able to afford to get the... You know the cutting edge ridiculous graphics card that costs almost two thousand um, dollars definitely can't afford that so i'm looking well you're lucky you can afford that stuff i just can't i think i think i could have gotten into if when i first built my computer i probably could have gone for the 30 or for the 1080 I probably could have done that and kind of gotten into that ecosystem of thinking okay get that get the 80. I think I'm more of a, a 70, unfortunately, at this point. Just, if not, <laughs> still paying it off. Yeah, see, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm still paying off a, a graphic card. Yeah, and we just bought a, I think we just bought a, we bought a Dyson, Dyson uh, vacuum, the cheapest one we could find of the Dysons. Sister-in-law gave us some, my my wife money for that, but she only gave us I think three hundred dollars because that's how much it cost in China to buy it. Uh, but here it costs about four hundred fifty, I think. So, so there's the big purchase for this month. I was hoping we wouldn't be making a big giant, but we, but we do need a vacuum. Buying those house things. So. Yeah, 30, 70, 30, 70 or the forty seventy. If I wait until then, I, I'm. You know, what I might do is I might, if the 3080, I'm assuming at some point 3080 and the 3090, they have been coming down in price. If those get to be about the price of of where like the 3070 would have been, if I can get like a 3080 for 500 bucks or, you know, under 500 bucks at some point within this next few months, I'll do that. Because then, because then it's like I'm not so far behind on my cycle like I'm using a six-year-old card right now and if I were to buy the 3070 I feel like okay I'm, but I'm already two years behind now on the 3070 all right so if I buy a 3080 it's like okay I'm a little you know I don't know it's it's all messed up I mean this is probably the worst cycle to be looking at graphics cards and that was my plan was kind of like every other I was like, okay, I got the 1070. That'll last me four years. You know, you know about a couple years ago, was at the point where it's like, okay, maybe I need to start upgrading the graphics card. I don't have a 4K, so I th a 70 would definitely be fine. I mean, I have a... The issue is that I have a ultra-wide, so I don't have 4K. I'm, I, so I'm at 1080, but I have... I'm at 2560 by 1080, so I do have more pixels on both ends. Right, so I'm not doing a 4K where I have, you know, yeah, it's it's fine. I'd like to have a little bit of overkill because I am streaming, you know, I do want to do some, 
you know, work and after effects and stuff. Yeah, 40, 90 would be definitely overkill. I mean, there's no way I'm getting a 90 anything, unless, again, that price comes down to a crazy place where it's like in $600, like the 3090 Ti or something, or 3090 is like 600. If I see it for $600 in the next few months, it's like, oh yeah, why not, right? But, you know, I don't mind having a little bit of overkill because I always end up finding ways to use it. You know, I have two monitors right now, so I could use a little extra because I'm not just using, I'm not just playing on a straight 1080. You know, but 1080 is fine. I mean, especially when you're streaming, you know, I mean, you could do 4K obviously, but I do the ultra wide. and I think I've always been a little underpowered, even with the 1070, even back when I first built the computer, it was, you know, it was struggling a little bit because I had the ultra, I bought the ultra wide screen primarily for American Truck Simulator because I just felt so claustrophobic on a little screen. I was like, oh, I can't see my mirrors, but if I have the ultra-wide, I can see more. Oh, that's the sad thing, is that it, they, they're just pricing out, they're pricing out the average game. And I, you know, it's like, am I the, a I always wonder, it's like, am I the average gamer? It's like, I would say kind of, because like, I don't need, I'm not, trying to game at 4k and I suppose the reason I don't game at 4k is because I don't have a graphics card capable of doing it and so I'm not going to go out and buy a 4k monitor to hook up to my computer that can't handle it so I was like when I first built my computer it was like I wanted to make it as good as I could but I also had a yeah you know, I didn't want to spend an insane amount that's kind of where I'm at now. It's like the budget's getting a little tighter, you know, with home owner, home ownership and having a baby. So, you know, the options are a little bit tighter. Got to be a little bit more budget conscious than you know, a few years ago. But yeah, I, I keep thinking that it's like, you know, like uh, because this is weird place right now where. The 30 series is finally, the prices are finally starting to get close to what they should have been when they first came out two years ago. Which, if you think about it, is still not that great because that's what they should have been two years ago. Now, if you're picking up a 3080 or 3070, it should be much more discounted because it's a two year old card and you have a new series coming out. But that just doesn't seem like it's going to be the way it's going to go, unfortunately. And then the new series is just going to, oh, well, the old cards from two years ago are still selling at above MSRP, so we can sell these new cards for 200 plus on all those. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm thinking about that. Last time I had an AMD was, I think it was in a, one of the laptops I had, I had an AMD card. And I think I had issues with it, but I do remember, like, I already switched over to AMD for the... The CPU. I did that last you know, last summer when I upgraded my uh, got a whole new motherboard. Obviously, had to get a new motherboard. But go to AMD. Yeah, Driving that's the thing. You don't get the DLSS though. ILS, approach runway Report when ready for descent. I put in ILS Yankee. Avianca 575, expect Auden 2 Kilo, arrival, ILS, Yankee, approach, runway, 07, report when ready for make descent. Sure put in ILS Yankee. Expect Adam 2 Kilo, arrival, ILS, Yankee, approach, runway, 07, report when ready for descent, of the Anchor 575. Okay, that looks good. Avianca 575, 
I think we went into the cat. I think we would then do a kind of a thing there. All right, 294. One night down. 200. OB anchor 575. Send and maintain 18-2. Keep belt signs on for descent. Oh, she kind of starts kind of dissipating over here. It's going to be coming this way. Surprised how much of it was up actually in Honduras. To assist with customs at our destination, flight attendants will begin handing out forms momentarily. Uh, I have a Toyota. Toyota, what? Toyota Corolla or whatever it is, but like the S something. It was kind of a little sporty. But it was just because that was the only used car that was available there where we went, and it was kind of the best one of the lot, I feel. Way too small for what we need now. Uh, Kind of when I was buying it, I was just thinking like, oh, I just need something to go back and forth from work. But now it's, I don't really need it to do that because I just walk to work and so that's nice. And when we do use it, then it's all three of us piling in and very small. Can't, I can't sit in the back seat at all. And if I sit in the passenger seat, then I, can't, I have to be like, my knees are up in the dashboard because of the car seat behind me. And, but yeah, we bought the wrong thing. <laughs> Yeah, NVIDIA, it's got the DLSS, which I don't have with the 1070, of course. I don't have any of that ray tracing. I don't have the DLSS yet. So. Yeah, it's, hopefully AMD can step up and, you know, kind of bring sanity to the, the pricing structure. The pricing of everything. Because, you know, NVIDIA doesn't seem to... NVIDIA is like, oh, yeah, people are going to pay whatever. You know, which, it's like, yeah, the, the enthusiasts, the top-end people that have just a ton of money, they're just a ton of money laying around to put towards an insane gaming rig. Yeah, they can afford, you know, $1,500 for a graphics card every other year. But your average... Person, you're leaving all these average gamers in the dust. That's why right now the ten or like what's I think the thirty sixty is getting pretty big right now. Twenty sixty is still pretty big. I mean, the sixty series is really taking off right now because like, well, everything else is pretty expensive. Descent and maintain eight thousand. Clear atom two kilo. Arrival contact El Salvador. Approach one two nine decimal two. Eight thousand. 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 New AOC El menu, weather request, send. Atom 2 kilo, arrival at 18,800, descending 8,000. Lisa Su. Is Lisa Su the, is she AM, AMD? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's very good. Continue to send 8,000, I'll be anchored 575. I just saw an article saying that it's like, oh, AMD's prices aren't coming down after all, so that's a little disappointing. Um, I'm interested to see what Intel Intel does with the with the with the market. Um, I think the two Intel cards that they just put out, those what 575 or whatever that is, those are probably I think those are competing going to be competing more with like the 3050, and again, still better card than what I have. You know, still an upgrade from what I have. Anything like a 3050 would still be an upgrade from what I have, um, but I do kind of want to, you know, get to a point where I'm not always behind. Though I want to get back where, you know, if I were to buy a 4070 next year, I would be kind of like when I bought a 1070. 1070 was kind of just out when I bought it. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping Intel coming into the market is going to. 
do something to lower prices and maybe they just they cater to the lower end and then I have to decide it's like okay where do I slot in here in this new environment where Nvidia is just gonna you know Nvidia's numbering scheme for their cards doesn't make match the costs anymore right because it used to be you knew okay 1070 okay 2070 is gonna be about the same price maybe you know, a couple bucks more the 3070 is gonna be about that same range of price 4070 oh suddenly the 4070 is now probably gonna cost what the 3080 cost well but I'm getting the 40 but I'm getting the 70 level of performance right even though yes the 40 cards are almost twice the performance on all the cards it sounds like so is Intel super overpriced? I'm talking about the graphics cards, the new graphics cards. I, I don't know if those are overpriced or not. But I haven't looked into it a ton and I have no idea. There's San Salvador right in front of us, or right below us now. In front and below. Capital of El Salvador. Got a volcano over there. I'm not sure what the name of that volcano is. Look, the weather doesn't look too bad here. See the airport. The airport's gonna be on the other side of this. But oh, okay, this is actually a lake. I thought this was the Pacific, but that's actually a lake. A uh, lake. Uh, let's see what the name of the lake is. Lake Ilopango. Ilopango. Or actually, we're flying right over a uh, little little Pongo International Airport. That's the uh, Yankee Sierra Victor. That's the POR we're headed to right now. And there's the airport. Oh. Wondering if that's like an older airport for El Salvador or for San Salvador. I guess we're having some network issues a little bit or something with the servers. So I'm dropping frames, also having a few of these tiles aren't loading in properly. San Salvador looking really nice down there from 12,000 feet. Avianca 575, descend and maintain 3,000. Descend and maintain 3,000. I'll be anchored 575. Uh, get this data put in. We have begun our final descent into your destination. Find it's the your destination. Alright, Q&H, 2, 9, 7, 3, temperature is 29, winds, 29, not 59, 29, oh, winds are 330 degrees at 7 knots, transition altitude, okay, 20,000, weird transition altitudes I'm seeing. Start to go back down into the clouds. Blowing down to about 230 knots. Headed to La Paz, a waypoint. We need to be at 3,000 feet. Astor will be at 3,000 feet. And then we're going to turn into final 70 degrees. And we're going to capture the glide slope at uh, 2,300 feet. So actually, if we can get to Astor, Astor on the, on the approach chart says 2,300 feet. 
hopefully we can get to that point. 2300 feet, and then at uh, 8.2 out, Ichus will capture the glide slope and on in. Um, go around 500 feet on the course, on heading uh, 70. Doesn't really go into detail though. Usually it goes a little bit further there. Uh, we're going to climb on heading 70 degrees until we reach 500 feet, then climb right turn to 3,000 feet, outbound via CAF VOR uh, radial 157. A little bit. All those so fast. I cried of a lobster? What? Avianca 575, descend and maintain 2,300. Descend and maintain 2,300. Avianca 575. Alright, we're going to kind of vector out a little bit further. It's still pretty high. Um, Technically, this approach you should be going way further out, but the, it, it's really weird. The star doesn't go that far. I, I don't know. It looks like we're kind of going right to final. So I'm going to vector out a little bit, and then we'll come back in, because we want to be at 2300 at Aster, so we can set up for the ILS. We're still above 7,000 feet. Get our landing lights on. Especially since we're in the clouds here. Uh, let's see, Mika Hun bought AMDs, 5800, X3D, CPU 3 months ago for $500, Intel's top model was like 800 yeah, 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 the AMD was the cheaper of the two, I was looking at the, I think I got the, what, the 5700, so I was looking at an i7, you know, the 10, whatever it was, and yeah, the AMD, I could get it just a little bit cheaper, like probably 50, 100 bucks less. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's, I mean, definitely, I think the, my, obviously, the upgrade to the 5700 versus, I had an i5, which is good enough for gaming, but if you want to also stream and do video, now you're taxing the CPU a lot. And of course, that was six years ago. Uh, yep, CPU is important, but CPU was a big change. Um, I'm a little worried about that because I upgraded my CPU and I'm still kind of struggling. But I think, I think right now I'm kind of bottlenecked now, so the CPU has helped. It's it's been night and day. You go back and watch some of the early stuff from way back when I was still on my old CPU, and then look at um, what I have now for frame rates, and it's a little bit more stable, a little bit better. Um, and again, I think the bottleneck now is. Um, I could probably use, throw some more, you know, I'm at 32 gigs for memory, so I could probably put more, but that's going to be for other projects, not just for flight sim. But then, uh, the bottleneck is the graphics card. So I got this, you know, modern, you know, CPU from the last year or two, but I have a graphics card from six years ago, so I can only go so far with the graphics. And again, I'm at high settings for everything. I'm running high settings, and so with the CPU, GPU and RAM combination that I have, I can still do all high settings and, and stream. I have two monitors. I have a 1080p monitor over here. I have an ultra wide 1080p over here. I got two monitors streaming high settings of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So pretty good, all things considered. And uh, you know, it's just going to be the. I like how there's a minimum right there, and it just skipped it. Why are we at why is the speed out of control now? I like how auto throttle just decides, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do. Yep, 1070 is getting old. But again, it's very like I was so surprised when five hundred. Because when I was uh when I was over in China and I had the I five and 
Well, I had all that when I first started streaming these, even on Microsoft Lightsaber. But I was in X Plane, and I did a few videos, I did a few recordings, and it worked a few times, and it didn't really work after that. Too bad. And so I was like, oh, I guess I'm just not able to do it with the simulators. I can't record videos. Not with what I have right now. And then I loaded up Microsoft Flight Simulator. I said, like, hey, let's give it a try. You know, I want to be cool to do videos of these world tours instead of just taking pictures and uploading pictures, which uploading pictures are cool too, I think. I like to have flight pictures. But, loaded it up and it worked. It wasn't too bad. I was at high settings. Even on my i5, I was at high settings. Um, now, I didn't have the second screen. I didn't, um, you know, and it was a little choppier than it is now. I think we flew out a little too far on the approach. But that'll definitely give us time to slow down. Yep, GPU is the bottleneck right now though, but I was so surprised I was able to even to record Microsoft Flight Simulator and then I started streaming it because I just didn't have time to record and then cut up a video or make a video and do all that and render and all that. So, like, okay, I just want to stream. I just want to get this out here, share it. If people want to watch it, they can. If they don't, whatever. Um, but I just want to share. People want to kind of see a flight and see some different parts of the world and they're interested in it. I know a lot of my African video when I was flying in Africa, those videos blew up with people who lived in Africa. They're like, wow, you're flying here in Rwanda, you're flying here in, you know, Nambia and you know, Namibia. And, you know, no one ever flies here, it's, you know, on these, on these uh, videos. So cool to see it. Yep, I have MSFS on a SSD on a solid state drive. Um, it's not on my M2 drive though. I wish I, I don't think I have enough room to put it on the M2 drive. And then the issue is also probably I'm losing some of the advantage of the speed of the solid state drive. And if I, even if I put it on the M2 drive, I could probably get a little bit more load speed. But I'm losing that advantage probably because I, ha I, I think for this flight, I loaded in, you know, when I loaded in Microsoft Flight Simulator before this flight, I think I loaded in about 130 gigabytes of mods. But all that's on my just regular old hard drive, my eight terabyte standard hard drive. And so, where are we going? Why are we turning? Pastor's right there. Where are we going? Okay, kind of a weird turn there. The Aster is clearly right there, 46 degrees, and we're going at 60. Going. Why are we not flying towards the waypoint? I mean, the waypoint's right there. I have to build across the train. Like we're over, airport's over there, and we're way over here. Can we go towards the actual heading? Do this manual to get to it. Hopefully it'll be worked out. Yeah, it was top notch. That's the thing. The 1070 it wasn't obviously the 1080 or did they have the 1090? I think they had the 1090. So it wasn't those, but I wasn't going to spend. I wasn't going to spend the same amount of money for just the graphics card as I was for the rest of the computer. You know, the motherboard and the CPU and the RAM and the power supply and everything else. I'm not going to spend the same amount just for the graphics card. I just couldn't justify it to myself, but. Yeah, it was. I think the 1070 was your mid, your 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 high end budget card. It wasn't the 1070? It wasn't the flagship? It wasn't the over, you know, for the you know the extreme enthusiast level 1090. And you know, it's still a good card because I mean I'm still using it, and I can still perform with high settings on most games still. Now, I don't know if I could stream, I mean, I'm, again, Microsoft Lightning is pretty intense, and I can stream with it with two screens. Now, so I'm probably pumping out the same number of pixels. I'm not pumping out 4K pixels just with Microsoft Lightning there, but I got all kinds of stuff going on on the other screen, and I'm running really 
pounding the crap out of my CPU. <laughs> oh. Alright, I think we're getting there, so we'll start slowing down. Approach, we're gonna be going 131. Start knocking out our flaps. Flaps too. That sounds bright, El Salvador and Honduras having a short war. I wouldn't be surprised. Hopefully we can get on the course here. Avianca 575, turn right, two heading, 061. Turn right, two heading, 061, Avianca 575. Spoilers armed? I guess I never Avianca disarmed them from our takeoff. descend and maintain, 1,300. Descend and maintain, 1,000. Avianca 575. Laps 3. Avianca 575. Turn right. 2 heading. 070. Approach. Turn right. 2 heading. 070. Avianca 575. Avianca 575. Cleared ILS. Yankee. Approach. At 1300. Runway 07. Report established on localizer. Cleared ILS. Approach at 1,300. Runway 07. Report established on localizer. of the anchor 575. Approach isn't working. Hmm. Well, we're in line, so we'll take it in manually if we have to. 131 is our approach speed. Of the anchor 575. Not established on localizer. localizer. I'm not getting the localizer, so I don't know. Of the anchor 575. Contact L South Tower. 118 decimal zero. Contact L South Tower. 118 decimal zero. Of the anchor 575. Oh, really? I had a war over football or soccer? El Salvador Tower of the Anchor 575 on final 0 well, PC used to be the PC and it was ex more expensive than a console, but you could build a pretty Continue robust of the Anchor PC. 575. Or, you know, if you did it right, you could probably build a PC for a thou between 1000 and 1500. That's basically what I built this one for originally. And you could do every, you could. And you you have more fun. I always felt you like you'd have more you have more functionality with the PC. You can do word processing, you can do web browsing, you can do video editing, you can do all that stuff. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. You just got to make sure your you know system can handle it. Obviously. There you go autopilot off. Landing gear down. Play recording. Cabin check. One thousand. That's a no. I guess the ILS system isn't on or something. At nine or not, clear to land. If we follow the follow the green dot, we should be able. Clear to land. Zero at seven. I'll be anchored five seven five. Yep, still using it on the left side. Oh, five hundred. Speed, speed, speed. Four hundred. Speed. I always have that issue with speed. I was gonna make climb, but <laughs> now we're. Get the speed. You see how fast that speed comes in, and now we're in trouble. Five hundred. Ah, we gotta go around. Four. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. 
and a gear up. Too low terrain. 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 Going, turning to 157. Try to get on that radial. I'm the three dot should be fine. Let's see, let's go. Fine and then. Switch it to VOR2. Well, I want to see, I want to see the VOR2. Uh, video. Come on, radial is. I'm not really on the radial, though. Go here and hold, and then we'll put in our uh, 57L. Yeah, there we go. Why is my button not working? There we go. Alright, we're gonna go to uh, Delta 157 left, that's where we're gonna hold. Put in a hold here. Bound course is one five seven. Okay. All right, so we're in a hold. We do have a delay. Seven. What approach do I want now?
right, so we're in the hold, setting up the computer. We're gonna do, we're gonna switch our approach to VOR, because the ILS isn't working anyway. Do VOR, DME Zulu, I think that's VOR Zulu right there. Do a VIA, maybe Delta 157 Juliet. Insert, we're gonna go on this. Oh, and there it goes. It's gonna go on the on the arc right away. It actually works perfect. Didn't wanna do a complete hold anyway. So we're gonna go on a we're on a 10 a DME arc out from the VOR. Jump into the VOR again. The radio nav page. Put our course back in for 70. Now if we go to the VOR rows, why that going like that? get in. Alright, so at distance of 8 from the VOR, not, I'm not showing it. do I have the wrong frequency in here? 117.5, 117.5. Why is it not picking it up? Maybe there's no VOR for this place either. Maybe I downloaded a bad, like the airport upgrade or whatever, screwed up all that stuff. Because yeah, it's not, it should be giving me a distance. So anyway, that I'm assuming this is going to be 8 miles out from the VOR. Eight miles out, we need to be at 2,000 feet. Let's start descending to that. And hopefully on this uh, attempt, we'll... Oh, I'll, I'll hand fly her in, but I just want to get the get onto the approach here. That's why I'm lined up with the runway right there. That's all I'm doing. Um, VOR is mostly hand anyway because you don't have, you don't capture a glide slope or anything. Um, I just need to make sure I do my auto throttle right, not uh, let myself sink out of the sky, and then I give myself power, and then you know I, I, that's something I usually do with the CRJ. I, I lose too much power, and then I then you fight because then you get the power back, then you climb, and then you lose your glide slope. So. Uh, yep, going around. Most of us always forget that they can go around. Yeah, usually the reason I don't go around is usually because I'm pressed for time. Like, suddenly, like, my wife and baby are standing right in the doorway going, Come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> it's always a little frustrating. I'm going to put flaps one. Here we have everything at set. Boilers are set. We're at flaps one. Why are we not descending to 2,000? Descend to 2,000 feet? 2,500. Go to to 2,000? All right, I'll be right back. Things slowed down. 131 for the approach speed. Flaps two. And let's descend to 1200 feet. Any gear down. I'm recording this whole thing. 2000. Maybe we'll replay the whole go around. I don't think I'll do that, but. Hopefully, this is the final landing. Daki, 
Um, it's going to be the final flight, or so going to be the only flight for at least this morning uh, because we've got some other plans. But we'll see what happens in the afternoon. And I'm guessing this is going to be the only flight for today. And then we'll be back on Wednesday for a flight from San Salvador down to uh, Managua. Hopefully, I, I'm probably saying that wrong, but Nicaragua, capital of Nicaragua. Uh, Laps three, laps full. We'll leave the auto throttle on. Okay, we're at 12,000, then we want to do about 3% glide slope. One thousand. Um, probably in the next in the new year will be getting into Asia, we'll be in the Pacific and uh, making our way into Asia. Looking forward to it. Five hundred. Quite a bit to go. Good Caribbean coming up. But uh, I think we'll be able to knock out a couple flights each um, each day in the Caribbean just because they're very short. Three hundred. Little hops in the Cessnas for most of them. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Ten. Five. Avianca five seven five. When Vegas hits the ground, ground contact ground one two one decimal seven. When vacated contact ground one two one decimal seven. Avianca five seven five. Flaps cleared, spoilers cleared. Hate it when it just does that, it just stops. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. The local time is 3.47 p.m. and it's currently about 29 degrees Celsius. Do not auto. use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the yes. aircraft has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Remember to use caution when opening the overhead bin and items that during the flight. Thank you for El Salvador ground, of the anchor 575, runway vacated with Alpha. Of the anchor 575, taxi to gate 11 by Alpha, Bravo. Taxi to gate 11 by Alpha, Bravo, of the anchor 575. Gate in. One, two, three, four. The eleven. <clears throat> well, we're gonna hit Asia on the world tour, but then, yeah, I, you know, definitely once the world tour is complete, I'm gonna be looking for obviously doing some more U.S. flights, but. Definitely some other places I'd like to fly for more. And I'm sure there'll be an Asian flight at some point here. I just, I hate it when I overturn like that. Killer just reaction time sometimes. Like I kind of want to do some flights in Thailand on a knock airlines. Maybe do like the one that we took in real life down to, when we went to Koh Lipe. Few years ago, 
Alright, parking brake set. Forgot to start the AQ. Do that. Drop the lights. Waiting for the AQ to come up. Get that on, we'll disconnect the engines, and hopefully the boarding process here in uh, El Salvador, will, at San Salvador Airport here, will be a little bit better. We'll maybe, hopefully we'll be able to see the passengers actually coming off. That'll be nice. Got a few American Airlines right over there. I thought saw some Spirit as well. Any AQ bleed, so we'll one and two switches off. Boarding requested. I guess I didn't call for the ground power unit. Nope. <coughs> this way, that works. No power available. That's all it says. He can light off. Passengers deporting starting. Oh, there's only one passenger though, for some reason. I don't know where they get the passenger numbers. With GSX, used to work just fine. You get all the passengers coming off. And shame that we're not going to be able to see them probably. Weird. There's one passenger. Oh no, there they go. Two? Two passengers? Our flight. I don't know why it's so thin today. But yeah, kind of a very interesting uh, departure, which I think just added way more time to the flight than needed. Um, there's our go around. We started to go into the hold, but it came right out. Landing rate negative 175 feet per minute, so yeah. Not a bad landing at all, I, I agree. But we'll see how it looks. But I'm happy with that uh, landing rate at least. Kind of struggled to stay on the on the center line once we got the wheels down, but otherwise it was pretty good. <clears throat> got passengers deboarding. We're not missing sections of the jetway, which is nice. We don't have floating passengers. When it all works, when GSX Pro all works and it isn't being weird, um, it's a really, really awesome addition. 
combine it with FSLTL and your airport. <laughs> now, your flight experience should be pretty cool, but that's if it all works. I'm gonna let these. They're taking their time getting deported here. This is like the longest, most passages I've actually seen come off the plane. Waiting, I'm gonna make sure I get my next uh, screen set up here. Next flight. That'd be the 12. Yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't catch the stream on. Uh, We didn't catch the stream yesterday, the second stream where we flew from uh, Washington DC to Philadelphia. Go check that out, especially the beginning when I loaded in FSLTL. There's just so many planes and the ta planes taking off, landing, nice line for uh, waiting for the runway for runway one there at uh, Ronald Reagan International. It was so cool and the ATC um, interaction was really, really fun. Alright, we're going to deport nobody here. We could have. I just want to get the whole GSX process done, and then we'll do the we'll do some replays here. So stick around for that. But yeah, check that out. It was really cool. Um, right now, obviously, we're just we're flying into some smaller, not as busy airports. We do a few planes parked, so actually, kind of zip over here and see what we got parked in the airports. We got full American. I thought I saw some spirit when I came when we were landing. And it think it's gonna be a cargo plane? Yep. Amerifreight or Amerijet. Amerifreight's a trucking company. Amerijet. Yeah, we just we just flew the last flight we flew into a Honduras was Amerijet. So pretty cool. Nothing's moving though, so they might just be I don't know if there's static park. Um FSLTL I have about fifty percent. Uh set to fifty percent that it'll park with static planes that are but most of the time, especially if you're at a more busy airport, you'll get some really good traffic moving around. And that's all being pulled from FSLTL. I'm guessing probably here there isn't a ton of stuff going on with the storm rolling in as well. Despite the fact that beautiful, beautiful afternoon. In real life, it's day. I have my, I think I'm in sim is afternoon. For the real life flight, uh, but beautiful afternoon here in Honduras, or morning because we're using the live weather. Uh, it doesn't look as uh, too bad. I thought there was gonna be a little bit more storm going on. Yep, I've done a few flights on Vatsim. I think I did one where I jumped in. I had Vatsim going, and then I was it was over in Africa and. There was just no coverage there, so I'm like, oh, I'll get on Vats and get some hours, you know, logged, but not really. And then right as I was coming on a uh, arrival towards a Rwa oh no, Nairobi, I think, Kenya, then uh, coverage came on right there, which was really cool, actually. A um, little bit difficult, wasn't expecting it, wasn't planning it, and then I wasn't totally prepared and ready for the accent and all that, but ended up on the ground, was fine. I did that event a few months ago back in, I think, January, February, where uh, I think Vatsim Germany and Vatsim Switzerland were doing two events. You could fly right between, like, Berlin and Geneva or something, and a ton of coverage, but then basically all the coverage went off, and there was, like, a three-hour holding time for landing, and I was like, uh, so I... Yeah, it's a challenge. I like that. Yes, I love the ATC that it's, you know, obviously it's going to be pretty realistic because you have real people, so you're not going to be messing around with the garbage. You know, AI ATC always misses something. Not always going to be perfect. Uh, I mean, that seems realistic because real. You have real people doing it. Um, is it, you know, real ATC all the time? Like real 
people who are actually air traffic controllers, all of them, no, but you have some who are just on there practicing and, you know, having fun in their downtime and pilots get on there and, and everyone, for the most part, most people take it pretty seriously and that's a cool thing. Yep. But you have real people. Yeah, everyone's real involved. And so, of course, it's going to be much more realistic. All right. So let's, um, I'm just going to turn on a few things for the replay. Uh, we finished the Volant play. Let's uh, end the pack pad. I'm looking at the flight, flight report. I should actually show you guys this, but I can't now. I can't move it. But... You know, comments on the flight from Pack X. I'm absolutely parched, so I guess they weren't getting enough uh, water. I'm now missing my meeting because we were delayed with our landing, and I'm, but I'm totally telling my friends about this airline, so we still have some positivity. A few people were a little upset because of the go around, but better to go around than break everyone's back and snap the plane in half, I think. Go to that ground power unit. Uh, we're going to. Don't need to do anything with the engines, but we can set the flaps. I'm gonna turn the lights on just so those are in the right place. Cool thing with the in-game replay is that the engine will be running in any case. Oh, here. Okay, let's go into the replay. Hopefully the doors are closed. No! Oh. <laughs> okay, at a certain point, I guess it just stops replay stops recording well we get we don't get to do replay i hate that i guess i should have stopped it earlier so we didn't i guess you don't want to record too long because it'll stop recording i guess that's how it works that's frustrating i wanted to see that landing i felt like nice approach on the second time and bummer that's disappointing in any case gsx now connected the ground power I didn't have a meeting. I didn't have a meeting. One of the pa one of the passengers on Pack X had a meeting, and they are now late for it because of the go around. No, if I had something going on, I would not have gone around. I would just smash that plane into the ground like I've done before. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> they might be. All right. Well, thanks for coming along on the flight, Mika, and everyone else. Uh, yeah, we'll be going to Asia. I'll probably set up an Asian flight, so if you are looking forward or would like to see some flights in Asia, I I, I have a few flights. I just kind of, I want to do the world tour. I want to keep getting the world tour flights in, but I, you know, there might be some random flights thrown in eventually. I just need, I need to set them up and schedule them and go, okay, I'm going to do this flight then and, and stick to it, hopefully. I'm really bad at scheduling and all that stuff. I'm still working on it, but... I'd like to do some flights in some other places just to switch things up. I'm really enjoying doing the U.S. tour, especially because it seems like the U.S. airports, at least D.C. and Philadelphia, were a lot busier than, you know, a lot of these Central American ones. So, um, keep an eye out. There'll probably be, I think I'm going to be doing a Thailand flight at some point uh, coming up here. I think that'd be a fun one to do. Uh, we do have some flight requests that I, I'm going to have to set up, um, and I've I'm kind of worked ahead trying to make sure I have everything set up for these world tour flights. That way they're just ready to go and in the hopper. So we always have a flight that's available for me to just do and jump into when we're streaming. Yep. Well, we're going to be getting over to Seattle. And that's the thing with that U.S. tour. I might, I, right now my plan with the U.S. tour is to, is to, go point to point like we're doing with the world tour so right now we're in philadelphia we're going to be going to harrisburg and then we're going to go harrisburg to newark and then newark to boston and you know point to point to point to point uh, which means the west coast is going to be a little bit later uh, but part of me is like you know i just want to maybe i want to do a flight you know, and i think that will be the case is that sometimes it'll just be a time where it's like you know what i'm just going to do a three-hour flight we're just going to do a flight from seattle to you know la or we're going to do a flight from denver to san Francisco, or whatever it is you know, or the same with in Asia. It, it just might be a flight, but I just have to set it up and go, hey, you know what? I'm feeling this. Next stream, I'm going to do this. So I hope you guys enjoy all these flights. Um, if you have a flight request, something you'd like to see again, if you can keep it, you know, three hours or less for flight time, those are going to be flights that I can more easily fit into a schedule. 
Uh, I just don't want to be streaming seven, eight, nine, ten hour flights. Um, until at least maybe, you know, maybe I could try doing some overnight, you know, longer hauls. But I uh, tried to do that Tel Aviv to New York flight a couple times and it crashed both times. Or, so we'll see. But thanks for coming along. I'm rambling here. Our next flight is going to be October 12th. It will be this Wednesday, 11 o'clock uh, Zulu time, which is 6 a.m. my time. So we figured that out. Uh, when that is, but the usual time, we'll be flying from San Salvador, El Salvador, right here down to Managua, Nicaragua. Hopefully the tropical storm has passed by then, and we'll have a nice, enjoyable, clear flight. And until then, you take care, and have... What do I usually say? <laughs> take care and happy flying.